Warning, this video may contain graphic content such as sexual scenes, violence, gore, boobies, and the rest of the fun stuff. Unfortunately, YouTube won't allow that, so we'll try what we can. Please be over 18 to view this video, and don't say we didn't warn you. Endlessly searching for an original sin. Hey guys, welcome back to Sinfully Fun Games. We look at games that are in production, are done, and just a little bit sinful. This game has got its own Kickstarter going on as of today. It's called Cosplay Convention Crisis. And hey, I do like games that are on Kickstarter that actually have demos that we can check out. So let's see if this one is worth it. Yeah, yeah, we already know this. This demo is not representative of the final game. It's a preview build, as are most. Any non-original characters referenced are copyrighted of their original creators and only included in the basis of parody. Yes, I can. On Sunday, October 23rd, Jack Kirby died at, the a at age 21. Jacob Kirby. <laughs> the way he died would have been completely unpredictable. Just a few days prior, while in the middle of a massive dispute, a beam of focused light energy struck him in the heart. Are we going with this anime cliche? At the moment of contact, it blew a hole in one end and out the other. Jacob was dead in seconds. His body crumpled like a house. Like a house with its foundation pulled out. The last thing he would see was the sympathetic eyes of his killer staring down at him. Perhaps if Jacob Kirby, really were going with that name, had made different decisions in his life, he wouldn't have ended up in this situation. Perhaps Jacob Kirby might have lived to see his 22nd birthday. Perhaps Conton, <laughs> Conton wouldn't have been the last convention he would ever get to attend. But maybe there was no way Jacob Kirby could have avoided such a heartless end. Maybe from the moment he met his killer, it was destiny that she'd be the one to kill him. Killer killing people, you don't say? Perhaps, maybe, perhaps, maybe, life is strange that way. Take a drink every time we have to say maybe, perhaps? I was one of the first people on the back of the bus. I walked to the back and claimed the center seat, where everyone probably expected me to sit. My name is Jacob Kirby, and today is Thursday, October 20th, the first day of Conton. The right side of the bus was being taken up by the, so by the <laughs> Sonic Club, Comic Club, and the left side by the Anime Society, which meant that there was, only, there was the only member of both clubs. I probably had to take one, take the one middle seat. The other stu- Really? There's no one else in both clubs? How does that work? The other students filed into one side or the other. They barely looked at one another. Fun fact, at my school, the Anime Society and the Comic Book Club hated one another with a burning passion. How? Which is why it's amusing that this year's Conton the local anime convention was joining up with Cape City, the local comic book convention, and it was double amusing that the school metro only lent us one bus. I went over my bag one last time. Bad check. Outfit check. Food so I didn't have to buy the outrageous food court prices. Check and check. This is why you go press. I smiled. No boring classes. No life-sucking part-time job. No obnoxious fantasy football obsessed roommate. This was going to be a great weekend. Please tell me you actually have your badge this time, dumb shit. I'm keeping the voice. A girl with boyish clothes threw her backpack into the seat opposite of mine and sat down. I gave a half wave. It was in my backpack the entire time. And I didn't lose it, Amanda. If I had lost it, I wouldn't actually—I wouldn't ha have actually had it. If you didn't have it around your neck and you weren't able to get into the con, I'm pretty sure that's called losing it. Amanda had been my neighbor in elementary school, middle school, high school, and also I guess we went to the same college now. She wants your D, and she learned how to. And she learned how to, as she put it frequently, tolerate me. She wants it bad. Are you going to tell me what cosplay you're actually brought yet? You'll just have to wait and see. 
Tell me this. Tell me this much. Did you bring any female characters this time? In my entire life, I had, I swear to God, only seen her actually cosplay as a female character twice. Once it was da da Damino from the Y people. Damino? Okay. And the other time, it was Illuminant from Final Fantasy 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. Both of whom look rather androgynous. This had been something of a pattern with Amanda for a while. Her, her only sport was inter, intermurial frisbee. Is that a thing? I had literally never seen her in a dress before. She actually wore a tux to high school prom. Yeah, we can guess what she is. Would it surprise you to know that I did bring a female character this time? Not if she has short hair and dresses gender neutral. Does she have short hair and dresses gender neutral? Oh, you're one of those really boring fops, aren't you? Are you going to be cosplaying anything this year? Yep, but if you aren't telling me what you brought, well, then it isn't fair. Amanda grunted and recrossed her arms. Before the convention could go anywhere else, another familiar, well, she's not a thought, I forgot what they call them, familiar face stepped into view. A sweet, familiar, devilish face. Oh, the scene next to you is open! Yeah, I'm not changing the voice on this one either. Makoto Mine approached us with her usual playful grin. Amanda's brows immediately furrowed into a glare. We're gonna see a cat fight! Makoto? Hey, Makoto. Amanda's voice was daggers. Mine, meanwhile, went down two octaves. Makoto seemed oblivious. Her smile was unshakable. She's going to be the biggest bee in this game, isn't she? She's going to be that really happy, friendly one that's just don't, don't, don't turn on her. Makoto Mine was an international student from Kyushu, Japan. But you wouldn't know that from her accent. Her English, totally flawless. I met her for the first time at the beginning of the year in anime society. From minute one, she made my head spin. For some reason, she was all over me. Touches, glances, everything. She wants the deed, too. It was something of a dilemma. On one hand, what straight man hates affection from a hot girl? On the other hand, Makoto, def Makoto definitely one of the cozy, crazy side of the hot, crazy scale. And then there was the incident. I'd spent the better part of the Attack on Cyclops movie. Yep, Cyclops. Holding my bladder. I could have gone to the bathroom and missed part of it, but at the same time, staying squirming had seemed a better option. A few seconds after I flushed, I heard the sound of the bathroom door. I was still collecting my bearings. I figured it was just another guy coming in, probably someone else from Anime Club. What I would have been out of my mind to expect was the door to my stall being slammed open. I could say I was caught with my pants down by this turn of events. Well, holy shit, she is nuts. So that's where you were hiding. You had me worried you were you would leave before we could spend some time together. Makoto was standing there in the bathroom looking into my stall. There was no illusion this was an innocent prank. Hell, she'd even taken off taken off her skirt. Her shirt. Nope, not skirt yet. Wait, does she have a tattoo? She's the thought. When had she taken off her shirt? My eyes were caught by her creamy pale breast. Why had she taken off her shirt? After I managed to put my brain back together, the first thing I did was cover up. She must have had a solid five seconds of watching my exposed dick before I could even stop her. Aww, you don't need to do that. I was liking the view. Mm -hmm. Makoto? What are, you, what are you doing here? She took a few. She took a step forward. The gap between us was closing. Her eyes were hungry. It was something I'd never quite seen in a woman before in my entire life. Just relax for a second, Jacob. I know you must be pretty confused right now, but if you just close your eyes, I can make you feel really, really good. She was blushing slightly. Com by comparison, my cheeks were probably stoplight red. I've been told I'm very good at it, you know. Making men feel good? I can make you feel good, too. Just close your eyes. Close them tight and relax. I was paralyzed. Totally paralyzed. 
Her body was so close to me, and she was only getting closer and closer to me by the second. I didn't know what to do. This was wrong, wasn't it? Her bursting in like this? Part of me just wanted to let this happen. Uh, uh look, uh, Makoto, this is, um, this, this is pretty weird. C can we, t can, can we take a second and slow down and, uh, talk through this? But Makoto didn't seem to be in the, m in the mood to talk through anything. She looked hungry, her lips parted, drawing closer for a kiss. It would be so easy to just... No, no. This was too weird. No, we're not doing this. You shouldn't be in here. You need to go. I rose to my feet. My position was so solidifying. How had she thought this was okay? Did she think she was just... She could just am ambush me on the toilet? Yes. Yes, she literally did. Go now. That didn't... That did the trick. Makoto's face sunk into a strained frown. I could almost see the gears in her head spinning. I match, I matched my eyes to hers. It was easier to keep my resolve than I had, than had I looked down to exposed. Okay, I'll see you next week then, Jacob. Doodles. And just like that, she threw her shirt over her shoulder and just walked out the stall. It was like her, none of that, it was like her. It was like for her, none of that really happened. It was all nothing but a game. Makoto was true to her word. She showed up next week to Anime Society pretending that none of this had ever happened. I suppose it was easier for me to try to pretend it didn't happen too. Makoto slid into the seat next to me and curled up like a cat, <laughs> found a warm lap. Oh, and she was grinning too. That was always a good sign. There are, there are other open seats around. Don't you think you'd like one near the anime club members? Makoto giggled. Amanda's glare didn't eat, give her an inch. Why? I like the back of the bus. And there's such great company here. You're not good at taking hints, are you? I will stab you. Bring it. Amanda knew, of course. I told her practically an hour after it ha even happened. At that time, she implied that I should have tried to sue her for sexual assault. She very strongly implied it. Well, I'm not sitting next to you, am I? I think Jacob should be the one to decide if I sit with him or not. You'll notice I'm sitting next to him and not next to you. Makoto turned to me with a prayer and gesture and a big round kitty cat eyes. Do you want me to go, Jacob? Do you, do you? Oh. Let's hear it, Jacob. Do you want Makoto to go? I sighed. Oh, maybe it'd be better if I sent her her way. Deep down, I had calmed down a bit about the whole incident. And it's not like I would mind having her throw herself on me for the entire ride too much. She probably just liked me, but didn't know how to express herself right. Though, if I let her stay, Amanda would probably spend the entire time glaring at her, and probably me too. Amanda could get a bit catty when she was mad. Perhaps it would be better to consider her feelings. So, let's see, we've got a save? We have saves, yes! So, again, this is just a demo we're showing off, and as of this going up, I believe the little problem I showed will have already been fixed. Hmm. You know what? You called me a dumb shit. Because you called me a dumb shit, you should stay. Just let her stay. She's got to sit somewhere. Besides, Makoto isn't going to cause any trouble on the bus. I turned to Makoto and stared at her with as much intensity as I could. It was not a face that left much up to interpretation. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm just an innocent little kitty. Meow. I promise I won't make a fuss. Purr. Fine. Amanda's facial expression was locked in a death glare that could probably kill a weak-willed mortal with a single glance. I didn't see you at Anime Society last week. Were you busy? Yeah, I had a shift at work. The normal guy who covered it took off. Oh, that's a shame. It was pretty boring meeting, though. We just played anime trivia for half of it. You didn't miss anything. 
I bet you spent the entire time checking the door to see if he'd show up, didn't you? Makoto, of course, continued her new policy of openly ignoring Amanda. At that moment, the bus kicked into gear and the trip to Kanton was on its way. For the first ten minutes, we chatted idly. Amanda was mostly quiet, but would to interject here and there. Mainly for snipping at Makoto, Makoto spent that time lavishing me with attention. Oh, who's my big brave master? Aw, oh, does he have a big mean person? I don't know where that joke came from. There were a few moments in here where I seriously had to stop myself and ask what reality did Matoka Makoto drop here from? Bubbly and attractive, but still following me around? Seriously? Do you want to hear what cosplay I brought with me? No. I guess. Well, I got this cool red phoenix outfit for cheap. I'm not much for a comic. I'm not much of a comic book fan, but I really like the material. Latex. Mmm. You wanna see it? Oh, I also have this wonderful cat girl made cosplay based on Chocola from Cat Paradise. I put it together myself. You played Cat Paradise, right? Fuck if there were ever a moment to have a pause button for a conversation. For a conversation, for a conversation. What? It would be this one. I don't think they caught that. The problem was that I actually had played Cat Paradise. It was a silly little cat girl. Hent a visual novel that was decently popular. That's right, I said hentai. That's the kind of game we're dealing with here. On one hand, I could furiously deny ever having even heard of it. But on the other hand, Makoto was so out of this world bonkers that she might actually prefer me to openly talk about hentai games. I mean, there aren't girls that like that kind of thing. I mean, I tried out a few hours, just out of curiosity, you know. A friend of mine owned a copy. Makoto giggled. <laughs> there was no way she didn't see through my line about a friend. Still, somehow, I'd actually had the courage to say that in public. That was surprising. For her part, Amanda raised an eyebrow. What's a cat paradise? Neither Makoto or I answered that question. Anyway... I have two more cosplays planned, but they're secret. A girl's gotta have some surprises, you know? Makoto gave me a flirtatious wink. It reminded me of how much I still didn't know about her and her motives. I decided to test a theory. Actually, Makoto, I have a question for you. Oh, what is it? What did your last boyfriend think of the fact that, you know, well, what did he think of how much you liked geeky stuff like anime and H games? It's kind of funny, but I've actually never had a boyfriend before. Well, at least not like a proper boyfriend. Makoto scrunched up shyly at the question, but didn't break her usual playful expression. Really? That's pretty surprising for a girl as pretty as you. Do you have a strict parents or something? You think I'm pretty? Aww, you're sweet. Add another answer to the confusing pile. Was she being genuinely bashful, or was she screwing with me? I'm gonna guess screwing with you. <laughs> it was nothing like that, though. The, circum the circumstances were just never right. The circumstances were just never really right for me. And that's all. Up until the past few months or so, I was always too busy. The implications of up to the past few months didn't elude me. Before I could ask the follow-up, Amanda coughed twice into her hand. I think we're going to be there soon. I saw the 11, the 7-Eleven on Oak Street, and I remember that was only like five minutes away from the place. We should get ready to go. Oh yeah, I guess we should do that. You're staying in room 302, right? Isn't that a reference to her is to Stephen King? Makoto perked up at the question. Amanda mouthed a swear word. My guess was she didn't intend to say that loud enough for Makoto to hear. Great. I'm just right down the corridor in room 304. After you've settled in, you should come over so we can plan what panels to go to. I nodded. The bus was pulling into the convention center by this point. The fox African decorations, such as waterfalls and lion statues outside the building, dominated the rows and rows of gray parking lots. 
In truth, the convention center was more of a hotel than anything. A kids kitschy resort for families and their kids too. But the fact that it was attached to a sprawling to the a sprawling side building made it an ideal site for a con this size. Well, that's actually kind of common though. I looked toward Mako Makoto, realizing that she was practically tugging my sleeve. She didn't like being ignored, that's for sure. Clearly, I couldn't or perhaps shouldn't leave this bus without scheduling something with her as well. Do you know what you're going to do during the con? Makoto's face brightened. Mm, I don't know just yet, but I'm positive that we'll see each other. Mm, I don't know just yet, but I'm positive that we'll see each other around. We could always set up the rave tonight. I, tr er, I tried to answer, but my voice was caught in my throat. The image of her body dancing and swaying heavily to music under the light of a glow stick was... was, well... was at least confusing, that was for sure. There was no time to answer anyway. A moment later, the bus rolled to a stop, students starting to piling off, eager to get to their rooms and plan their day. Makoto softly brushed her side against me as she stood. Then she vanished into the crowds with one last rotacious wink. Think you're staring a bit too much, Casanova? I'm not staring. If I wanted to stare, I would I would have back in the bathroom when she didn't have a shirt on. Maybe you should have. Then you wouldn't have had to drool over her in front of me. Oh, shut up. I was just trying to be polite. You know she doesn't have it many friends. Men decide, no matter how much she tried to stay annoyed, there was just no way she could keep a straight face. We were both too comfortable for a lingering bitterness. Besides, there was a bigger fish to fry. Amanda stood up, extending a hand to help me join her. Any minute you stop owing her politeness was when she invaded your bathroom stall trying to fuck you. Come on, moron. Everyone's already left the bus. The first thing I did after getting the convention center was to go up to my room. I was sharing it with two other people who I'd never met before, but were in the comic club with me. Then how did you never meet them? Neither of my roommates had shown up yet. Naturally, I used this golden opportunity to claim one of the beds for myself and begin unpacking. Thursday was normally a short day, but I did have a cosplay planned. As I got into my suit, my eyes were drawn to a unique feature of the room. Is that a portrait of a gorilla? Why is that even here? The gorilla portrait had eyes that followed you around the room like those old Uncle Sam posts. They stared down at my undressing body, ominously. This hotel was totally weird. Why was this thing even here? I tried to throw my on my outfit in a hurry. Amanda was still waiting for me in room 304, after all. But, before I could even leave, there was a knock at the door. Hello? Yeah! Guy Garner, really? I mean, it looks like Guy Garner. Got tired of waiting. Someone, w someone was being a girl about getting dressed. Yeah, sorry about how long it, it took. I was in the staring contest with a gorilla. Are you high before the con? What? I pointed out the strangely ominous gorilla painting for her. Amanda just seemed to find my reaction kind of funny. Eh, I've seen weirder shit than that. Nothing phases me anymore, I guess. Are we going? Panels are already starting. It's Thursday, girl. You don't go to panels. You go shopping. Amanda was already off running towards the hallway before I could agree. I grabbed my backpack and my keycard before following after her. Amanda paused in the hallway, only a few yards away from the hall where all the panels were concentrated. Oh, one more thing about what happened on the bus. Just real quick. Well, that sounded serious. I paused to hear her out. What's up? I don't trust Makoto. We were doing such a bad job of sh You were doing such a bad job of showing it back in the bus. I don't mean I don't like her. That's fucking obvious. No, 
I mean, I think she's lying to you about something. Every word out of her mouth is some kind of manipulation. I'd keep my distance if I were you. Lies? Why do you think that? Because she's a woman. I mean, seriously, women can actually smell that out. To be honest, I don't know. She just gives me the creeps. Hell, I felt that way even before the bathroom incident. Oh, is she like the one from Suzumiya? The really friendly girl that ends up being, like, trying to kill uh, the main character? Is that it? Oh, I can't remember the character's name. I paused, unsure of how to respond. Amanda is one of the people I trust most. If she really didn't trust someone, I should take it seriously. Still, she really was taking this grudge against Makoto way too far. Amanda looked down, then she nodded. If you say so, I just don't want to deal with your whiny ass when she reveals she's crazy. Honey, we've already figured that one out. Afterwards, Amanda went back to ranting about what particular panel she wanted to go to, as if it were that interlude that had never happened. In fact, that would surprise no one, she rejected outright any of my suggestions for an anime-based panel without even the slightest bit of consideration. Dump her and go with the other chick. She might be crazy, but maybe she'll have at least some decency. I do like the Kanton uh, thing in the background. It's a cute kitty. All right, so it's not quite lunch yet. That means we have time to go to either the panel about Mar Mar Marvelous Movie Adaptions or the interview with the creator of Bane. What do you think? Go to the creator of Bane or get out. Do they have any guests at the Mar Mar Marvelous Movie? Why is that one giving me trouble? Marvelous Movies one? Nah, it was fan submitted. Go to the Bane one. Yep, casual. So, tiny projector, PowerPoint presentation. Probably a guy who, stuck, who sucks at public speaking. Amanda shrugged. They could know something about comic book movies, though. You never know, right? Plus, not necessarily a guy. The con floor was already packed with activity. Much of it was in front of the registration desk, where the line of people... People out the door were waiting to buy a badge. This is why buying badges ahead of time were smart. Or going press, because then you get your own private entrance. One second. Someone's calling me. Oh, God damn it, it's work. What do they want? I raised an eyebrow. Since when did Amanda have a job? Today? Today? You can't be serious. You guys can handle this without me. This is my off weekend. I told you guys way in advance. Yeah, I know it's important. But time away is important, too. Do you know how much stress you cause me? She took her phone off her ear for a second and leaned back towards me. Hey, uh, can you go ahead? I, uh, we, we can just, uh, meet each other on the food court. I, I need to deal with this. Are you sure? Positive. There's no way they're talking me into coming into work on a Canton weekend. No way in hell. But I need to take this right now. Right. You have my number, I suppose. I wander around the hallway looking for something to do. Now that Amanda wasn't here, I could consider going to one of the anime panels, but I kept on losing my train of thought. What had her work been calling her, right? Amanda had relatively frequent absences and cancellations from social activities, at least over the past two years or so, but I didn't recall her once mentioning any kind of job. So guys, with that, we are going to be at the 30 minute mark soon, so we're going to end it here. If you guys do want to see the full video of this, uh, a full video of this uh, demo, let me know, and I will do an absolute full one. I want to thank the developers and the publishers for sending me this demo to play. It's an honor to always get to play one of these and see all of the little mistakes. Um, if you guys do want to try this, it is the demo is out on Steam, and there will be a link to the Kickstarter, which is pretty awesome. I do know one of the things they're doing is a stretch goal, I believe, of these cute little knitted dolls, and they look so darn adorable. And who knows? Maybe we can convince them to stick one of the girls in there. <laughs> You'll never know. I'll see you guys next time. If you guys like my work, give some love. Check out my Patreon. We're trying to to hit our goal so that we can do issue two and three of the comic and do a lovely little swimsuit issue. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, my love.